Hello everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to make a waxed canvas drawstring bag or pouch um, from start to finish. Now I did a wax canvas video a while back. It's got close to 8,000 views. Pretty amazing. Um, but back then I did it with a, uh, the heat gun, which I have here, and with an iron. But I have since learned a, you know, a better technique that works for me anyway. And um, what I have here is a piece of duck cloth, which is 100% cotton. You can use a drop cloth. You can use, you know, any type of canvas that you have. Uh, you can even use uh, denim, as long as it's 100% cotton. And I have a little bit of a setup here. Um, what I have is a piece of cardboard down. I have some of these T-pins. Hopefully that shows up. And then underneath the duck cloth, I have a paper towel. So I just stretch it out and I put these T-pins in to hold it in the corners. Then I have here just a regular old foam brush. And then over here, I have my little mini crock pot, which has the melted wax in it. It's not totally melted yet, but it's good enough to start. And that's basically a Greenland um, mixture which is 90% paraffin, 10% uh, beeswax. Now, paraffin is much cheaper than beeswax. Um, I wouldn't use 100% paraffin. It, it seems to make it a little stiffer than with the beeswax, but you can pretty much, you know, do a 50-50 mix, 80-20. Uh, you can use 100% beeswax. I, I have a lot of stuff with 100% beeswax in it. Pretty much could, you know, experiment and do what you want to do. But this is my new technique. And I'm going to show you, like I said, from start to finish. So the first thing we got to do is we got to wax the canvas, okay? So I take my heat gun and I preheat the canvas. And then I'll put the wax on. And putting the wax on is very simple. You just dip it in. Dip it into your uh, wax and we'll start putting it on. So let me heat this up. Now, when you're doing it this way, it sets the wax in pretty good. You get to see if you missed any spots. And I found that you use less wax with this process. So I, I love the way that this works. So let me continue on and I'll take you to the next step. Okay, so now the whole thing is covered in wax, as you can see, and doing it this way uses far less wax, and it's much faster. So now we're done with the wax, I can unplug this, set it aside, give it a second or two. We'll start taking our pins out. And you want to get this off of the paper towel. Now, as you can see, if you watched the first video I did, the back was totally saturated. Now it's not, okay? And you can see that it's got very, very good coverage. It's already starting to stiffen up. And look at all the extra wax that went through. Now, don't throw this out. This will make an excellent fire starter. Then the next step that I do is I'll put down a cleaner piece. 
and I'll look at this and I'll look for any spots if you see like this this extra wax now you don't have to do this step I mean it's pretty much good to go but I like to do this and what I do is I'll put the heat on it again and you'll see it get very wet looking in certain spots and when you see those just take another paper towel fold it up and see if I can give you an example of that all right probably not showing up but if you look in this corner there's a little extra wax I'll put my heat gun on I'm not sure if that shows up but you just dab it I'm not sure if that showed up but it gets very wet looking And that's pretty much it. You just dab out the extra wax. And you're good to go. Now still at this point it's still very pliable. And you want to just leave this for a couple minutes. 5-10 minutes. And uh, it'll stiffen up. And then we'll continue on. Alright, so it's dried up. As you can see. It's stiff. Now there's some advantages of doing the um, waxing first. And one of them is you could use a utility knife to cut it now. And it cuts beautifully because it's stiff. So I'm going to square it up. As you can see, it really does cut easily. So I'll do that on all four sides, and uh, I'll bring you back. All right. So obviously, you can make this whatever size you want. Um, so it's all trimmed up. Got 90-degree corners. Another advantage of doing it this way is you could take an awl or, you know, a pin or something, and you could mark this. Pretty sure that's showing up, but you can make your lines like that. It leaves a nice mark in the, the wax. And then if you don't like the mark later on, if it still shows, you can just heat it up and it'll go away. So the next thing we're going to do is I like to um, fold the edge over here so that it doesn't fray when I put the um, cordage through. And all I do is I just take this and I bend it over. And that's another advantage of waxing it first. You don't need an iron. So I'll just go down. Let me give you a couple measurements here so you kind of see what I'm doing. So the whole length of this is 9 inches. And I just went down uh, 3 and an eighth inches. Okay. Just like that. I just folded that over because you're going to end up folding this top over and I don't want this to fray here. So you got to make sure you fold it over enough that both sides of that is going to be covered. So you see about three inches. So I'll do that on both ends. Show you again. Just give yourself about a quarter of an inch. And again, it's, it's not critical. It's three inches or three and a half inches. It doesn't really matter. Because we're, gonna, we're just going to sew this down here, and we're going to end up sewing the whole thing anyway. Now, you could do this whole thing by hand, sewing by hand, uh, but I prefer the sewing machine. But obviously, if you don't have a sewing machine, you could do it by hand. Okay? So we have those two ends folded over like that. And um, next step is I got to get the sewing machine set up. So let me get that out. All right. Hopefully this all shows up. So um, last I left you, we folded over this edge. Now we're just going to put a stitch on this. Use a decent thread. I use Coats and Clock upholstery thread um, because uh, this is some pretty thick stuff and you're going to be tugging on it. So I just line this up. And 
And don't worry about back stitching it or anything because you're going to fold that over. And that's it. Just throw a stitch down there, hold that in, trim off your excess. Do it on the other side. All right. Let me uh, reposition this camera and I'll show you the next step. All right, so we have these sewed up here. Now the next step is gonna be, we're gonna wanna fold over to make our section where the um, paracord or whatever you choose to put in there goes in. And again, you could get as fancy as you want with this. I just usually eyeball everything Fold that over, okay? And this is where your paracord is going to go in. And like I said, you could double stitch it, you zigzag it, do whatever you want, you know? It's your, uh, it's your project. So I'm just going to take this over to the machine. I'm going to give a stitch line along there. So I'll bring you back over there. All right, so we're back at the machine. So I'm just going to put a, a stitch line or two. I'm not sure how many I want to do yet. So you're going to want to do a back stitch um, at the edge over here. So basically there's a little button on every machine to do a back stitch. So um, I do them mostly by hand because I only want one or two. Uh, if you're really good with your sewing machine, you definitely do everything one, two, three. So let's get at it. All right, so we got our line. That's all you need. If you got good thread, that's all you need. So now the next step is gonna be, we're going to fold this. Well, actually, I like to put the paracord in first. So let me get that and I'll show you how to do that. All right, hopefully this is all coming out clear. I should actually check but it's very humid out today, and uh, I do film outside, slash halfway in my garage, halfway out. <laughs> All right, so now they make special tools for this. Oh, I, I added a second stitch line. Um, again, you could do whatever you want, but they make special tools for this. But I just use um, this floral wire. And again, it's easy to do it before you finish sewing it, but you certainly can do it after. And I'll just put a little bend on it in that direction and then slip it through. How many of us have used a coat hanger? How to put a piece of string back in, uh, drawstring back in? And then slip that on there like that and then bend it this way. So now the uh, the little tag end is facing this way so it doesn't grab onto anything when you pull it through. Get it started. Just pull it through. Make sure you leave yourself enough. You can trim this up later. All right, I'll take you back over to the machine and we'll finish this up. All right, so now we're going to want to fold this. Okay, and you want to have it it's going to be inside out. So the, the good side that's going to be showing is going to be on the inside. Okay, line up your corners. 
And again, great thing about waxing it first, it stays where you put it. Make sure you got your uh, poles out of the way. Now we're just going to throw a stitch right down here. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to end up right here where we had that folded over and put that little stitch in there. So we're going to come right down here and, and we're going to stitch that. Actually, I'm going to come in from here. And then put a couple back stitches in. And that's it. Now we put a stitch across the bottom. And then I like to turn it around and go back and put a double on the bottom. Now you could put a double stitch on the side here, which I actually think I will do. And again, depending on what you're putting in it, I mean, you know, if you're putting in, you know, a pair of sunglasses, you're not going to need to double stitch everything. But if you're going to put in, you know, flint and steel kits and rocks and whatever, you know, make it as uh, sturdy as you can. Take you back over to the uh, table and we'll show you what it looks like all right so the next step is we got to turn it inside out and just again you know you could wrinkle this all up I actually like the way it looks once it gets uh, wrinkled up also there's another tip for you if you heat this up with the heat gun or a dryer, as you're turning it inside out, it's so much easier. So much easier. Now, when you get down to your corners, I have this little piece of uh, chopstick that I kind of soften the edges. You want to be very careful when you're doing this because you, if you don't have a very soft edge, you could poke right through it. You just want to push your corners out. I, I'll tell you what, I'm going to get the heat gun because I'm going to show you how easy it is to do when you heat this back up. Let me grab that heat gun. All right, now check this out. Got my heat gun.
That's all it takes. Now watch how. See how easy that was? Because now it's it's soft. And you can just push it back out. That's where the edge is there. Let me see if I get my hand in there. Push that out a little bit. And that's basically your bag. Now you can get one of these little um, cord stops, put that on there, and then this is going to be stiff first couple times you do it. But there's your drawstring bag. Wax canvas. You can make these any size you want. And again, you don't need a machine to do it. You can do it by hand, but obviously the machine's going to be uh, a lot easier. And you keep playing with these corners until you get them the way you want them. And again, just be careful you don't poke through. And that's it. So there you have it. How to make a wax canvas drawstring pouch. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully uh, you'll try it yourself. It, it is. It's pretty easy. Um, just take your time and uh, you'll be able to do it. And like always, everyone, I appreciate your views and I appreciate your comments. I hope you all are staying safe and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.